If an alien came to Earth from outer space and did a global media analysis of the word love, they'd probably come to the conclusion that humans only had one type of love romantic love. This idea of equating love with romantic love is a pretty modern concept. The ancient Greeks had seven words to describe different types of love and considered a relationship successful if it combined all seven. Romantic love is as enthralling and intoxicating as it is painful and unforgiving. Romantic love has completely eclipsed love as a concept partly because it brings up such strong emotions. And in our world where there's strong emotions, there's big money. Billions of dollars have been made from portraying the idea that the key to your ultimate happiness lies with finding the one. Your favourite songs, movies and books likely mention romance more than any other type of love and now this concept is reflected in our social norms. Seeking and finding romantic love is seen in many cultures around the world as the most important thing you'll do with your life. From childhood we're told that romantic love is special and should be prioritised over all other types of love and we believe this because it feels special. We think we'll be lonely and unhappy if we don't have romantic love in our lives. But ironically, the society we live in doesn't help us to succeed in romantic love or love at all. The way romantic love is portrayed in our society is a scam and it's not setting us up to be happy. It's doing the opposite. This idea of romantic love being the most important type of love is great for capitalism. For 90% of human history, humans have lived in hunter-gatherer communities made up of a few dozen people. Different types of love were needed to make sure that our communities flourished and that we survived. Romantic love was important for reproduction, but certainly not prioritised over other types of love. The nuclear family consisting of a partner and kids and a mortgage is a pretty new phenomenon, but it's the perceived ideal for many modern humans. The nuclear family which is created by finding a romantic partner is portrayed as the only way to reach your ultimate ultimate happiness and have all your needs met. This idea is not only false, but it actively feeds into the dysfunction of the world we live in. It works for the powers that be to continue to push romantic love as the only form of love worth nurturing. The nuclear family may look idyllic on the outside, but it conditions hierarchical thinking from birth. Historically and stereotypically, the dad is the head of the household and mum and kids follow behind. Is it any coincidence that our global, economic and social systems mirror this hierarchical setup? Reinforcing the cultural ideal of the nuclear family is a great way to get people to accept hierarchy by teaching them these values from their own homes. The nuclear family also creates competitive and materialistic behaviour. It teaches us to prioritise our own family unit above everyone else, even above those in our wider communities. If we're not prioritising the strength of our community and we're seeing other families as competition, we're much more likely to engage in consumption that elevates our status above other families. These cultural norms serve to keep our capitalist system going. If there's no sense of community among strangers, if people are blind to the idea that all our interests actually align, and if people know the inner lives of the Kardashians more than they do their own neighbours, then there's a much lower chance for a revolution. For all its romanticization of romantic love, ironically, the world we live in makes it extremely difficult to succeed in romantic love. Romantic love at its core is about intimacy and passion, but in our society, it's become intertwined with consumption. Modern dating rituals require disposable income, and in heterosexual relationships, expectations of who spends that money is rooted in traditional gender roles. The stereotype goes that men are expected to consume more, pay bills, buy meals, flowers, etc. to showcase their commitment and women are expected to spend money on conforming to the male gaze. This kind of transactional relationship can only allow a connection to go so deep. It serves as a barrier to true intimacy and passion that comes with knowing someone for who they truly are. Money and beauty are desirable qualities in our society, but we should question ourselves when we use them as criteria to pick partners that we might spend our lives with. The way we meet romantic partners has been completely taken over by capitalism as well. The process of dating has been monetized by dating apps, which has both fed into and created a culture of disposability around romantic love. Instead of spending time exploring imperfect people and finding authentic romantic connections, anything less than perfect is quickly discarded for the illusion that someone better is just to swipe away. It's the age of single-use plastics and single-use partners. 
oh boy does the media stand to make a lot of money by perpetuating this idea that romantic love is the be all end all of love. And this is because the erotic is extremely powerful. Romance novels, romantic comedy movies, fictional TV couples, real celebrity couples, reality dating shows, audiences eat this stuff up. Media and production companies have made billions spilling the tea on juicy sex capades and dramatic breakups. The erotic enthralls us, titillates us, and other types of love seem almost boring in comparison. So this type of media keeps getting made, which keeps the importance of romantic love alive in our collective minds. The erotic is powerful, but it's also mysterious and poorly understood, which adds to its allure. Although societies are changing and becoming more sexually liberated, most places around the world are still pretty conservative. In many places, it's taboo to talk openly about sex, explore adult play, or even display strong emotions and explore deep feelings. Romantic love in many places is one of the only areas of life where it's acceptable to explore these important aspects of human existence. It's not only easy to convince people that romantic love is the only type of love worth pursuing because it brings up such strong emotions, but we've actually made it so that it's socially unacceptable to touch, play, hug, or tenderly give someone affection outside of the confines of romantic love. This is why romantic love is so alluring. But like any human relationship, romantic relationships require compromise and are sometimes extremely difficult or even plain boring. This fairy tale idea that our romantic partners can bring us endless excitement and happiness is not only misguided, but it actually sets us up to fail. That magical and tantalizing feeling romantic love gives us is a valuable way to learn more about ourselves and to explore our deeper feelings and our sensuality. But unlike what the media would like you to believe, your life is not empty without it. If we continue to equate love with romantic love, we won't be able to benefit from the many lessons that the different types of love can teach us. We won't be able to break free of the confines of the capitalist nuclear family. This one-dimensional way of thinking of love isn't working for us. In her book All About Love, which should be required reading for everyone in my opinion, Bell Hooks says, I think that part of what a culture of domination has done is raise that romantic relationship up as the single most important bond. When of course the single most important bond is that of community. What's really ironic is that the way our society is set up, romantic love is often the easiest way to gain a community, and there are very few avenues otherwise. Community is an innate human need and it dates back way longer than the nuclear family. But in the 21st century, finding your community without romantic love is pretty difficult. So what can we do? It makes sense, considering human history, to go back to centering community love however we can. Think of community love as a balanced and healthy ecosystem of different types of love. To be healthy and to help you be happy, your love ecosystem needs a diverse range of different types of love, and it's up to you which kinds of love you want in your ecosystem. Self-love is the foundation of all the love you'll have in your life. No one else can make you feel whole except you. While other people can help us feel supported, cherished, cared for, it is true that we can't give love to others unless we can give love to ourselves. Some of the ways I give love to myself are by taking care of my physical body, taking the time to move or do yoga, not for any result but simply because I care about my body. In terms of my mind, I try to treat myself and talk to myself like a best friend would. I fill myself with positive thoughts and imagine showering myself with gratitude, especially when feelings of self-doubt or negativity come up. The extractive system we live in benefits if we don't give ourselves love. We might be more susceptible to advertising that stokes our insecurities, or we might work ourselves to burnout if we feel we're not enough as we are. The relationship you have with yourself is the most important relationship you'll ever have. Just like you work on your relationship with other people, you'll need to work on your relationship with yourself every day. Bell Hooks mentions in her book that love is a mix of care, affection, recognition, respect, commitment, and trust. When you're evaluating your relationship with yourself and with others, try to examine how much of these you give yourself and which love ingredient you could work on giving yourself more of. Friendship love is the love we give platonically to people we choose to be in our lives. Even though friendship love doesn't give us the same strong emotions romantic love does, it's a type of love that feels safe and comfortable and can sometimes last longer. 
It's hard to prioritise friendship love as an adult because capitalism takes up so much of our time, but that's just another reason to focus on nurturing it even more. Family love is love we give to those we share close genetic relationships with. These aren't chosen, which can definitely create conflict and difficulty. This kind of love specifically usually requires a great amount of acceptance and patience. In positive family love relationship, there is deep trust and familiarity. Romantic love can be a mix of family and friendship love with added intimacy and passion. Ideally, romantic love is a safe place for us to explore our sensual sides and learn more about our deepest feelings and desires. Friendship love, family love and romantic love are types of love that work best when they're rooted in acceptance and when they're reciprocal. Ideally, everyone gets something out of the relationship and everyone can be who they are authentically without fear of rejection. These types of love are safe and affirming and allow us to grow while providing support in different ways. Selfless love is another type of love that isn't really talked about much but it's so necessary to create a better world and a better society. It's a kind of love that's rooted in kindness and compassion, perhaps for a stranger that's completely different to you or a cause that you care about. It's love you give where you don't necessarily get anything back. Selfless love is such an important organism in the ecosystem of love if we want to live in a healthy society. Creating a healthy ecosystem of love in our lives is the key to living in a healthier society and a better world. The beauty of the love ecosystem is everyone is free to choose the combinations of love that they want to nurture in their own lives. Your love ecosystem will look different to my love ecosystem. The cultural messages we've been fed about love do not serve to keep us happy. They serve to keep a culture of competition and hierarchy going and to stop the flourishing of community. They serve to sell us things, dating app and Netflix subscriptions, romance novels and movie tickets. Romantic love, as it stands, is a scam, but we don't have to buy into it. Making an effort to nurture and prioritize different types of love in your life sends a message about the type of world you want to live in. One that's defined by equality, acceptance and mutual care. If we want to live in this type of world, we must first unlearn the messages conveyed to us in the media that romantic love is the only type of love worth pursuing and nurturing. We can't take for granted the other types of love in our ecosystem. We can still participate in romantic love, but not get carried away by its thrilling promises. If we're brave enough to do this, the very fabric of our society could change for the better. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Nagiz. I showed you my love ecosystem, but I'm really curious what kinds of love you have in your ecosystem. It could look completely different to mine, um, but let me know in the comments. And if you want to learn why it's so difficult to build community under capitalism, watch this video. And if you haven't already, click subscribe and I'll see you next week.